If you want to get rich in the Bitcoin or stock markets, there are only two steps to get there. Surprisingly, perhaps, it's the same two steps if you want to succeed in your career, even health or relationships. Number one, have a plan. Number two, follow it consistently. And it's number two, which is the difficult one. When investing in the markets, everyone knows to buy low when people are fearful. And when the euphoria makes you physically high, it will go up forever. And you're in love with your own genius. You sell high. Everyone knows the plan, but can you follow it consistently? In trading, everyone knows to cut your losers swiftly with no remorse. And hold on to your winners despite the fear of profits slipping away. Everyone knows the plan, but can you do it consistently? In your career, you know to lead without a title. Seek out the difficult tasks. Serve your customers, constantly improve. But no one reaches mastery in their craft in a year. It probably takes you at least a decade. And can you do that? Day in and day out with consistency. Health-wise, only one out of four adults in the US has a normal weight. It's not that the remaining 75% can't figure out the elusive plan. If you eat less and exercise more, you lose weight. Everyone knows that. But consistency is hard. Every single guy can be their best self on the first date. But being a good husband, a good father, as the years roll in like the wind, a cold, dark winter night, is hard. I'm no different. Looking back at the first half of 2022, in many ways I've done fantastic. I've handled this market among the best in the industry. And I didn't just wing it on a lucky day. I followed the process and I opened it to you so you could see it too. The process called the downturn. Lars Online was blue, while most YouTubers were calling 100k all the way down. It worked again. But in another way, I still struggle. There are channels that give garbage advice with a million subs. I have not been able to reach them. Why? Because the world is unfair? No, it's because those other YouTubers have done something else better than me. The YouTube algorithm doesn't optimize towards quality of the education or quality of the market analysis. YouTube optimizes for the quality of the retention. How well they keep people on YouTube. If I don't show up all the time, YouTube won't suggest me. And then there is no growth. If I want to educate more people, I need to make more videos, more often. It's not that I don't know that, it's that I failed to follow step two with consistency. So what to do? Sit shaking my head in my hands and sulk about the algorithm? Or be angry at the people for leaving one of their most important decisions, who to trust, to an algorithm who doesn't have their best interest at heart? No. You can be a victim, or you can be a leader, but you can't be both. So what to do? Who is the master of consistency at YouTube? I want to find out how he's doing it. And I hope to share that insight with you in this video with the hope that it will help you in every aspect of your life. Investing, trading, career, health, relationships. Tjena, Peter! <laughs> Fan! <laughs> Good to see you, finally! Good to see you! How are you doing? Fantastic. Fantastic. This man is named... He's not named CTO Larsson, but that's that's what he goes under. Anders! Anders Larsson. Larsson! The one and only! I'm here to learn about something that you have tattooed on your arm. Maybe! <laughs> <laughs> I can uh, teach you something about finance. Yes, this Business. dude. He has consistency tattooed on his arm. And I brought some nice whiskey for the truth to come out. Be prepared. Ta-da! This doesn't look like much. Well, in a few years, everything else that you see is just green screen. 
uh, that I used to put up somewhere around here. And <laughs> in Sweden, we don't hire much. If you want something done right, you gotta do it by yourself. And also, the more you do by yourself, the better it feels. So Peter has built this entire place with his bare hands. Here is studio number one. I am, I'm sorry for the mess, but I didn't have the time to clean this up <laughs> after I came back from the vacation. This place is huge. Maybe hard to tell, but this is gigantic. I've never this. seen so many Nerf guns <laughs> in my entire life. <laughs> See. This place is also bigger, actually. Yeah, that's you can true. be in a tiny, tiny, tiny space and still make it seem huge yes. with a wide angle lens. But this place is actually big. Look at all the details he has put up here. Mountings of the... Put the camera there. Adjust everything. Swivel. And then record the videos. This is a very good angle because then you have this as sort of an interesting subject and then I can walk up to the camera from the other studio and it makes the shot a little bit longer, still keeping it interesting. <laughs> Cheers. The most mm. common feedback from you guys on my channel is that they wish that I could do more videos more consistently. And you are the master of YouTube consistency. Where do I even begin? <laughs> <laughs> with coffee. <laughs> with, with coffee. Um, from Sweden. When it comes to consistency, I think that one of the most important things is to see beyond what is boring. Because not everything is fun. When, when you want to be consistent in something, you have to do the boring days. You have to do the boring parts. You have to do the things that you don't really enjoy in order to be consistent with what you do. I think I don't have a problem with boring. I'm fine to do boring things. I struggle with the perfection, the kind yeah. of I want to know exactly what I'm going to do, exactly what I will film, and then I end up not doing a video that day instead. Yeah, it's a little bit like you put too much pressure on you, and then instead of recording the thing that you set out to do, you start doubting yourself and questioning yourself. And do you think this advice about consistency applies to all areas about life? For example, you can just look at you and see that you are being consistent with your exercise, for example. <laughs> Absolutely. I think consistency has been such a huge part in my life to achieve any form of progress and success. And when I'm saying success, I don't mean monetarily success, but success in what I do. For example, bodybuilding, I was doing that for 13 years consistently, like department and then I started doing YouTube and I've been doing that consistently. You have to be consistent if you want to get ahead of everyone else. Do you think you can practice consistency? Yes, absolutely. Being consistent is not something that you have from the get-go. It's not something that you're born with. No one tells you that you have to do this every day. Mm. That is something that you learn. Yeah. Right? I think it even maybe goes against our nature. I feel yes. that we're kind of, we live in a cave, we go out, we hunt the mammoth, and we run the <laughs> and we kill the mammoth, and then we, you know, bring the mammoth back, and then we can just, you know, chill for one month, eating <laughs> mammoth, and, and chilling, and then we go out and we run again. And I feel that this kind of every day, go and do something, it, it's hard. It is. And I think the way that we can see it is in society. Our society right now is lazy. We're mm. becoming lazier and lazier and lazier. We have cars. We have uh, trains. We have buses. We have taxis. We don't walk. There's mm. not as many bikes being sold as there have, has been previously. And people don't want to exercise. They want to quick results. You know, mm. they want to go into the gym two months. That's it. You see a lot of people start working out in the beginning of the year. Mm. And then they do that, keep doing that for two months, and then they slowly fade off. And then they do the same thing next year, but that is not being consistent. If you are consistent, you keep doing it. I am struggling right now with going to the gym. And Does it look like this guy is struggling? <laughs> <laughs> it's like practicing that every single day doesn't matter if you're making videos or if you're into the stock market or whatever it might be, you gotta practice and you gotta be consistent with what it is and what kind of research that you do. How much faster are you to make a video today compared to when you started? It's a lot. For me, I mean, four years ago when I was making a video, I could spend days 
on making a regular talking head and I had everything scripted. I was reading from a script and it was like, okay, I, I need to read this and deliver it in this way. But now I can just start the camera, I can talk and I can turn around the video in like one hour, one and a half hour. Guys, if you never edited a video, that is incredible. <laughs> <laughs> How about you? I usually take at least one full day to make a video. We all have different personalities. A lot of YouTubers in the finance space, I think they're fine to just go live, talk for one hour about news of the day. And yeah. they do it great, but I think that's not for me. You have to be short and detailed when you go in and talk to, you know, the chairman of some big company. You cannot go there and babble for one hour. It's not possible. <laughs> it's going to walk out after one minute. So I think I have that with me that I feel that I have to get to the point. I have to say it. I have to get out. I like that. I will keep that style. I need to be able to do it faster. Being faster is also starting to think about the edit before you edit the video. When it comes to creating an intriguing story, we don't want to explain what the viewer is going to see. You want to show more of what you do and then after you've done it and recorded yourself doing that, you explain why you did it. You don't see any sort of movie explaining what is about to happen before it happens. If you watch any sort of documentary, Netflix, Discovery Channel, National Geographic, what they do is that they document and then they talk about what it is that we see, they explain why we're seeing it, what is happening. They don't explain everything in the beginning of the documentary. Mm. Right? And that is the same thing for me. I document the things that I do. But still, tomorrow when I wake up, maybe I don't feel like making a video. Surely you feel the same. Absolutely. Or yeah. In the morning, for example, when you work at a daytime job, you don't want to go to your job every single day. Sometimes you wake up in the morning and feel like, oh, I don't want to go, but yet you go there. Once you get there, you usually feel a little bit better. You start talking with your colleagues, you get to work and then you get into the flow. And I think it's the same thing with videos because this is our job. This is my job to record videos. If I don't record videos, there's not going to be anyone else that does it for me. And practice brings results. Practice makes me better. And I try to see every single video that I do as some form of practice, maybe finding the right angles, maybe finding more interesting angles or using my camera better. Just waking up in the morning with the thought of, okay, if I do something today, I will be better at doing that tomorrow. Mm. And having that in the back of your head is something that will help you to progress. Thank you for coming to the studio. <laughs> so what I usually do in this segment is that I take out the recycling for the plastic. And it's one of these three bins, which is perfectly aligned for that corner to throw from. So when I do that in the video, I start by walking in through that door and then either smash one of the bins or point to it like that and then throw it on the shoulder and then you're done. I'm very impressed. It's very far away. So I have to try it, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Where is it? It's over there. This one. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try. Ah. Behind the scenes, making a YouTube video. <laughs> I sit here with my iPhone, and you're sitting there with FX3. Skål och välkommen. Cheers. Tack och adjö. Ses i dimman. Thank you. Tack. Sitter och Larsson. Hej då. Sitter och Larsson out. Hej då. Sitter och Larsson out. Hej då. Ja. Ah. Okej. Okay. Thank you. Tack. Sitter och Larsson out. Hej då. 50 tries to get to the end of that. Maximum 100. Det är ganska mycket.